Ladies and gentlemen, conservation is dead. I'm talking about the 19th century concept that there are, is a vast wilderness area waiting out there for us to come along and preserve it for future generations. We're very fortunate in this country to have the vision of our forebearers in creating beautiful or preserving beautiful natural areas for us to enjoy. And millions of people visit our national parks every year. But increasingly, people's everyday lives are more and more disconnected from nature. Na we have made nature into a specialized experience, a pilgrimage. At the same time that we were creating our national parks and setting aside our special places, we altered 98% of the lower 48 states for human use, mining, agriculture, development, and forestry. Over 43,000 acres have been, 43,000 square miles have been paved. And much of what we think of as nature really consists of non-native plants that are completely dependent on irrigation, chemicals, and mechanization. Spanning more than 40 million acres, turf grass lawns, America's largest crop, receives more fertilizer, pesticide, and herbicide than any other single crop. 60% of our residential water usage goes to support landscaping. That's 90 gallons of water per person per day. And 800 million gallons of gasoline are used to mow American lawns every year. Even in native natural areas, the impacts from human activities have been so great that they've been degraded to the extent that what we're really talking about here is restoration and not simply conserving something that already exists. Invasive plants have become a monoculture in many areas, completely eradicating the native plant community on which wildlife is completely dependent. The process of re restoration begins with eradicating the weed species and restoring a diverse native plant community. This is the picture of the same area three years later after a wetland plant community has been established providing high quality habitat for wildlife, but perhaps more importantly, an opportunity for urban people to interact with nature on a daily basis. In a typical residential development, open space usually consists of non-native grasses mowed within an inch of their lives. And this may have some ecological value, but by no means could this be described as a functioning ecological system. This, on the other hand, is an urban <coughs> shortgrass prairie restoration. And this provides connectivity through the urban, our growing urban corridor for wildlife, but it also allows us to step outside of the artificiality of the built environment and actually connect with the region that we live in. This is a picture of the same area and the ocean of weeds that existed there before restoration. And this is a representation of the growing army of volunteers from many different organizations that make large-scale restoration projects like this possible. This very land where this theater is sitting now looked like this 150 years ago. Buffalo roamed here and antelope that were hunted by nomadic indigenous tribes. First agriculture and then development have radically altered this land. But nature is above all oppor opportunistic. And lakes dug for irrigation have provided ideal habitat for migratory waterfowl. This directly conflicts with the idea that everything human beings do is destructive to the natural world and to wildlife. When developers build impermeable surfaces, such as rooftops and parking lots, they are required to collect the stormwater um, in order to, to prevent flooding. Stormwater ponds typically offer very little in terms of, of aesthetic and ecological value. 
This is a stormwater pond that was designed and built to replicate the ecological functions of a wetland. It purifies water through filtration, removing toxins from the environment. And if you were a bird, or a child for that matter, which pond would you want to live beside? <laughs> if we could build stormwater ponds like this, we could restore thousands and thousands of acres of high quality habitat in the very heart of the cities where we live. And the good news is, this is actually happening now. In 1998, the U.S. Green Building Council created LEAD, Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. A decade later, the Sustainable Sites Initiative, a second generation of LEAD, placed an increased focus on the sustainability of the site outside of the building. On this particular project, a great deal of care was taken to preserve the native plant community, and where they, this couldn't be preserved on site, plants were dug, removed from the site, and restored after the construction was completed. 7% of this ins the installed landscape was irrigated turf grass. 47% of this installation is low water use shrubs and perennials, many of which are native plants. And 46% is either preserved or restored short grass. And the result is a seamless integration of the built and natural environment. Green roofs, such as this one at Denver Botanic Gardens, utilize stormwater and reduce the urban, the urban heat island effect. Green roofs have also provided unanticipated benefits for wildlife, such as killdeer nesting in these sites that are far removed from predators, such as raccoons and foxes. So is, as the bumper sticker says, growing the economy, shrinking the environment? If growing our economy means that we are creating ecological systems that increase species diversity in the midst of the developments that we build, then growing the economy can actually mean growing the environment. Unfortunately, this has not been the case over the last 40 years. With urban sprawl, bird species here, or bird populations in Colorado and elsewhere have declined by 60%. If we could utilize native plants in our landscaping, we could reverse this trend for birds, butterflies, and pollinators, and effectively restore nature where we live, work, and play. The young people and the next generation deserve to have access to nature. It's part of our birthright as human beings, and those who count turtles and frogs as among their childhood friends are much more likely to become advocates for their preservation in their adult life. Thank you.